Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Anis Arisha binti Abdul Malik. Matrix number A168346. And this is the presentation for nuclear physics. The assignment given by Dr. Izzat. And I have chosen the topic nuclear shell model. Many models describe the way protons and neutrons are arranged inside a nucleus. One of the most successful and simple to understand is the shell model. It was first proposed by Dimitri Vanenko in 1932 and was later developed by Maria Gopert Mayer, Eugene Paul Wigner, and J. Hans Dijensen in 1949. This model uses the Pauli exclusion principle to describe the structure of the nucleus in terms of energy levels. The protons and neutrons occupy separate system of shells, which is analogous to the shells in which electrons are found outside the, the nucleus. From light to heavy nuclei, the proton and neutron shells are filled separately in much the same way as electron shells are filled in an atom. The nuclear shell model is similar to the atomic model, where electrons arrange themselves into shells around the nucleus. It has been observed that if a nuclei having either the number of protons or number of neutrons that is equal to one of the numbers 2, 8, 20, 50, 82, and 126 is called the magic numbers. These atomic nuclei that have magic number of protons or neutrons are much more stable than other nuclei. Stability can also be influenced by the natural abundance. Experimental data shows that nuclei that has magic number as number of neutrons are in abundance compared to other nuclei in nature. Some of the examples are oxygen, which has magic number 8, calcium that has magic number 20, and plumbum that has magic number 82. These three elements are most abundant in the nature. The doubly magic nuclei, where both N and Z are magic numbers, like the helium, oxygen, calcium, and plumbum, are particularly tightly bound. The binding energy of the next neutron and proton of the magic number will be very small. The evidence for a kind of shell structure and a limited number of allowed energy states suggests that a nucleon moves in some kind of effective potential web created by the forces of all the other nucleons in the orbit. This leads to energy quantization in a manner similar to the square well and harmonic oscillator potentials. Since the details of the well determine the energies, much effort has gone into construction of potential wells for the modeling of the observed nuclear energy levels. Solving for the energies from such potentials gives a series of energy levels like the diagram I've showed on the left. The labels on the levels are somewhat different from the corresponding symbols for atomic energy levels. The energy levels increase with orbital angular momentum quantum number, which is denoted as L, and the SPDF symbols are used for L that equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, just like the atomic case. But there is really no physical analog to the principal quantum number n, so the numbers associated with the level just starts at n equals to 1 for the lowest level associated with a given orbital quantum number. The quantum number for orbital angular momentum is not limited to n, as in the atomic case. In addition to the dependence on the, de on the details of the potential well and the orbital quantum number, there is a sizable spin-orbit interaction which splits the level by an amount which increases with orbital quantum number. This leads to the overlapping levels that has been circled in the illustration. The subscript indicates the value of the total angular momentum j and the multiplicity of the state is 2j plus 1. The contribution of a proton to the energy is somewhat different from that of a neutron because of the Coulomb repulsion, but it makes little difference in the appearance of the set of energy levels. With this set of identified nuclear states and the magic numbers, we can predict the 
the net nucleus spin of a nucleus and represent its nucleus state based on the identification of the level of the odd nucleon in the order of states shown in the diagram. The parity of the state can also be predicted. So the single particle shell model has shown itself to be of, to be of significant benefit in characterizing nuclei. Shell model can also determine the spin and parities of a nuclei. The protons and neutrons tend to pair up so that the spin of each pair is zero and each pair becomes n equals to one. Thus, we will have three types of pair. The first pair is the even-even nuclides that have zero intrinsic spin and even parity. While the second pair is odd a nuclei that have one unpaired electron. The spin of the nucleus is equal to the j value of that unpaired electron and the parity is negative 1 to the power of L, where L is the orbital angular momentum of the unpaired electron, uh, I mean nucleon. The third pair is the odd-odd nuclei. In this case, there is an unpaired proton whose total angular momentum is J1, and an unpaired neutron whose total angular momentum is J2. Now, the total spin of the nucleus is the sum of these angular momenta and can take values between the difference and the sum between these two values. So the parity is given by negative 1 to the power of L1 plus L2, where L1 and L2 are the orbital angular momentum of the unpaired proton and neutron respectively. Since nuclei with an odd number of protons and or neutrons have intrinsic spin, they also possess a magnetic dipole moment in general. However, the precise origin of the magnetic dipole moment is not understood, but they cannot be predicted from this shell model. For example, we take the nuclide fluorine that has a measured value of magnetic moment at 4.72, whereas the value predicted from the shell model is negative 0.26, which gives a, a wide gap of difference. So, we can conclude three assumptions from the shell model. First is, the nucleons are arranged in different energy levels within the nucleus. Secondly, there are two sets of energy shells in the nucleus, one for the occupation of neutrons and the other for protons. Lastly, each energy level can be occupied by two neutrons and two protons, provided their spins are opposite. So, when two neutrons or protons spin in opposite directions, the magnetic field of each will cancel one another. This will lead to stability. Some of the most significant importance of the shell models are it explains the basic nuclear properties like the angular momentum and magnetic moment. It explains the existence of the magic numbers. It also explains the relationship between the number of protons and the number of neutrons and the nuclear stability. Then it also explains the phenomenon of nuclear isomerism and it can also predict the net nuclear spin of a nucleus and its parity. The shell model also comes with some limitations like it fails to explain the stability of four stable nuclei like the hydrogen, lithium, boron, and nitrogen. Secondly, it doesn't predict the correct values of nuclear spin for certain nuclei. Thirdly, the quadruple moment calculated using this model is also not in a good agreement, and the magnetic moment shows deviation from the observed values. And so we have come to an end for this presentation. Thank you so much for listening and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.